This is the uh, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, April 5th, 2018. Uh, we have to do some, a uh, little bit of uh, board business before we start with the people that have filed for hearing notices here. So if you just give us a couple minutes, we will uh, take care of that. First item of business is we have new board members, or two of us anyways, and the fifth one is missing and we have to have a chairman for the board. Anybody here wants to be the chairman? <laughs> Somebody has to nominate something. I nominate Richard as Thanks. chairman. <laughs> I'll second that. Thanks. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. No. <laughs> I have a letter here that I have to that we received from the zoning board regarding a piece of property that I have to read into the record. Uh, sent to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, Zoning Board, Deerfield Inspection Department. Ladies and gentlemen, enclosed you'll find a letter that we have sent to the Chief of Police in Deerfield regarding our declining situation. At 711 and 707 Greenfield Road, Routes 5 and 10. We want to be aware of what's happening at our location. As we have stated to the Chief, we believe the situation escalated beyond a simple border altercation. We have pursued legal counsel and our lawyer, the Honorable Jack Curtis of Greenfield, has explained that these types of situation could linger on for years. We have reached out to the Police Chief and now are reaching out to all of you for help in resolving this situation. It is dangerous from a traffic safety standpoint, and our clientele are now being verbally confronted by an angry, aggressive Mr. Atherton. Help, please. Mr. Atherton submitted blueprints and site plans to the town of Deerfield for their approval. Today, his site does not look anything like his approved blueprints and site plans. Is there a form, a meeting, a council, a board that we can appeal to? We have Mr. Atherton's permits reviewed to at least have his site resemble his initial design. In all seriousness, we want in the long run is unhindered, safe access and egress from our businesses and our clients, Mr. Atherton. This board is not in a position, we can comment on it if anybody would like to, but we are not in a position to comment on that, this letter, because there is no appeal here, and this, this letter will be referred to the building commissioner for his input. Anybody want to say anything here? Okay, that takes care of that. Now, we have three things on the hearing here for tonight. Uh, I, if we'd like to take the ones that are quick as possible so we don't make everybody linger here for the lengthy ones. And if I just ask how many people are here for um, Mr. Gorey's thing, just kind of a show of force here, just one. Okay, how many people are here for uh, Hugh Mannheim? Three. I guess that means everybody else is here for Antes. Mr. Antes. And for, uh, seeing there's only one or two people, we'll take the ones that have only one or two. That way we'll have a lot of time to give to vote to the Mr. Antes project. I will read the first notice into the hearing. The Zoning Board of Appeals the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on April 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the main reading room at the Deerfield Municipal Office, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the application of Blake, Blake Gorey of 37 South Main Street, South Deerfield. Mr. Gorey is seeking a variance for alteration to pre-existing lot and structure on a non-conforming lot at 37 South Main Street, South Deerfield, map 168, lot 34. And if you're representing Mr. Gorey, if somebody would gonna do a presentation, step up to the plate here, please. So basically there's a existing structure that I'm looking to um, connect to the existing building that I work out of. I do have um, just a couple of. Oh, I need to, I need to address one subject. Yep. Only four members showed up tonight. So when it comes down to a vote, you have to have four votes unanimously or the appeal fails. 
you'll have the option up until the time that we're going to take a vote to decide whether you want to that or to continue to the next meeting and have five people present. All right. So that's an option that everybody will have tonight. Do you have a map or something? Oh, here it is. So, it's just, so you guys can't even decide on the matter tonight? Yes, we can decide on okay. it. But we can't vote. Yes, we can. It's one, two, three, four. You need all four votes. Okay. One, per, one person votes against. You so get if you're a, feeling like you're not getting the support you think you're going to need. I got yeah. you. And it's a two-year, can't appeal for two years. Apply for two years if you fail. And this is just one other that one shows it too. Okay. This is um, the Pan Am Rail runs through here, mm -hmm. and there's an existing building which is the ACC, mm -hmm. and then like to look at, the but... mm -hmm. 37 South Main Street. Where basically, um, I would like to connect the two buildings to make it a manufacturing. But that's what we do in this facility, and I'm all I'm looking for is this to connect this space to to to. Okay. Gain more indoor manufacturing. Okay. Questions, anybody? Or how much more are you going to add on to what you got? It's uh, like sixty-three feet. Um, That's what's between it, the two buildings. Um, the actual addition would be off the existing. How do I say that? Um, from the thirty-seven building it's a total of 65 feet by 50 feet um, so basically just connecting the two on this one map is this th uh, 37 would connect to the ACC if that makes sense to you so about 314 feet total total with both buildings yeah. okay. same roof line um, no. no it's uh, it the existing structure, I don't know why that 250 is there. That's uh, the way that the town has it on their mapping. I apologize for that. So the existing structure there is, is 55 feet in length from north to south. So in a sense, all I'm, all I'm doing is connecting. So it would be a total of um, like 130 feet for both buildings. And... I guess I can't stress that the buildings, there's already a building there. So all we're doing is connecting the two. Um, the the ridge line stays the same. The footprint stays the same. Um, the roof pitch is going to change um, on the new addition, I guess, if you will. But the actual footprint is the, the exact same. Of what's there now that abuts back to the railroad tracks yeah and then just because we're talking the, the right away that I have goes to the P&M Railroad but they have actually a, a right away through there also I guess with that from South Main Street um, besides that that's all I the right away is a strip between lot 33 and 35 yep And how much you have left between the railroad track and the building? Um, from the center rail, uh, from the existing building to the edge of my property line is probably 15, if not 20 feet. And then the the, the railroads kind of funky. They have they the way they draw this out is from center rail that goes through which is that like that n the new the new high speed rail they call it now is 33 feet from the center of that rail to that line that you're seeing like here is their property line and then over from there to that building the existing building is like probably 20 feet and is lot 37 another access to that property there is, yep. That's also owned by uh, Pan Am Railroad. Lot 37 is Pan Am Railroad? No, uh, lot 37 would be... Um, Jankowski. Say that again? Jankowski? Yes, yep. You know where that is?
Any questions, anybody? Anything you want to add more? Not if there's anything that I didn't answer, I guess. Okay. Anybody from the audience want to ask a question? His access, uh, he has the right away. Do you plan on using that right away as a new access? Or are you going to keep using the old one? Yeah, the, the right away that's there that is the only right away that I use, basically. Okay. It's the only. The 1144 one, right? Let's say that again. 1144, it's on the map here? Yes. Okay. Yep. So you don't, you don't need that space to turn a truck around or anything? Nope. No. Nope. There's other um, behind. Uh, so that 11.44 11 is the right of way. But as the, the easement goes around, there's enough room in front of that building for parking and, and as, you know. That's that point one six eighty acre piece yep. that you're talking about, right? Yep. Okay. okay. Uses of the building. What are the two buildings being used for now? Um, manufacturing, <clears throat> I guess, in terms of like uh, we do work for uh, plastic companies in the area. Fabrication. Yep. Fabrication. It would be a better word than manufacturing because we don't we don't just manufacture one item. We do fabrication or modifying um, uh, existing mm -hmm. products. Fabrication is a good word. <laughs> so do you consider this just an expansion of your business? I do. Okay. Um, uh, basically, um, in uh, roof coverage, something indoors is what, what we're moving for. I don't really have a, 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 a direct plan on where, what we're doing 100%, but that's what we're going for is, is uh, more, more indoor. Okay. Anybody? Frank? I don't have any questions. It looks pretty straightforward. Kathy? I'm, I'm fine. Bernie? Fine. Anybody else want to make any comments? Just to, to make sure that everybody knows that he's not gaining any space on the blueprint of the two buildings. Basically, he's just tying the two buildings together. So it's not getting bigger in yeah. length. It's not big, getting bigger in width. <clears throat> and he's not getting any close to the tracks. And any turning around to get around the building or any uh, vehicle traffic is going to be the exact same pattern of what he, is what he has presently. So and it's no pass-through for vehicles or anything no. now. Thanks. Anything else? Well, well it's, uh, that's commercial, right? And you are a registered business in town. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, no problem at all with it. Yeah. To oh. Encourage it. Thank you. Are your motion to close the hearing? For for the motion to. Accept. I second it. All in favor? I uh, would we'll deliberate. Okay. No wishes from me. Kathy? I'm learning the ropes here. <laughs> um, so. Ask any question you want. <laughs> it sounds fine. I did read a lot about how um, a substantial hardship needs to be uh, shown to have a variance granted. So I'm just trying to understand if that's something that we have to take into consideration. That is a consideration. Uh, the hardship, I would assume, mm -hmm. the hardship is that he can't expand his business without expanding his space. Right. Which I think in this particular case is a little lenient, but that's the question. Questions? Want to go to a vote? Sure. Yeah. Frank? Yep. I, I vote yes. Me too. Yes. Unanimous. Okay. I'm going to record who, okay. who voted yes and who was.
Okay, the hearing will be closed. Thank you for your time. Yep. Uh, next one will be Mr. Mannheim. The Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of nope. Deerfield, will hold a public oh, hearing on April 5th, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Office, is 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the application of Hugh Mannheim of 311 River Road, South Deerfield, is seeking a variance at 39 Thayer Street, South Deerfield, map 175, lot 46, due to the structure's non-conforming use of a non-conforming lot that has been vacant over a period of over two years. It's grace period in making a variance a requirement. Mr. Mannheim. No, Mr. Mannheim. What the board want to do with this? They want to table this? Let's go to the next one. Yeah. Table it, have Mr. Mannheim come to another meeting. But yeah. the next hearing, we can reapply. Okay. Can I ask a question? Please? Go right ahead. I'm confused. Uh, uh, my name is Rocky Foley. I live at 16 South Main Street. I got a letter that is a, uh, a good letter. <laughs> A potential of butter, but the number that's listed there, 37, that's the building that the uh, BBA market is there. That is correct. Okay. This house is, uh, I'll explain what this is. This, house, this lot is like, it's a little over two acres, or approximately two acres. It goes from the, uh, the deli around the corner on Boren Avenue okay. and encompasses that house. The only thing that happened is over the years, it fell out of its compliance because no two buildings on one lot. So uh, this isn't that complicated, but it's, it's a, a little bit. But uh, right now, you can't renovate that house without getting a variance from the board. His second choice, okay, if a variance would be denied, would be he can go to the planning board and subdivide that lot because he has enough square footage and enough frontage to do that, okay? So how it got to be here is uh, uh, probably he should have gone to the planning board and asked the planning board to subdivide that lot. That would have been the process. What I was conf confused about is uh, the house directly across the street from it. That one's been abandoned for over two years, and that's the one I really had bought. The so I was just confused. the house across the street from the deli. Yeah, the one that, the little one that sets back. No, that's mine. He's talking about um, 38, 40, 44. 42, 44. 44. It's right. been yeah, it's right. It's the one right next to the book. It's a little By bit the cemetery. across from the deli, not directly across. Yeah. So. Okay, I was just confused about no, that. This is this I is the one on Boren Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. Right okay. The corner. Now I understand, but. Uh, I was confused at which, yeah, whether it's the right number for the, the house at all. They, they told me it's if because you're within 300 feet of the address, okay. 39. Yeah. There. The butter of butters get notices. Yeah. Well, I asked why I got a notice, yeah. and I was told yeah. it was because I was a 300. There's a radius, feet. And, and at least two of butters, <coughs> the, the butter and that next to butter get notified. So oh, that's okay. Right. That's why so I got it. Okay. Thank you. This, this is going to be going to be take no action and just come up. So I need a motion to table this. Motion to table it. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Table. Question over here. Uh, I was just, so, you, so the gentleman will come back at another He's going to have to reapply. Oh, you will have to put in a new application. Yeah, put in an application. Okay. Hmm. You have to start all over. I'll watch the. I'm going to stay for the next one. It sounds interesting. Okay. Next one. The Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Deerfield, will hold a public hearing on April 5th, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the main meeting room at the Deerfield Municipal Office, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on the application of Max Antes of 67 Stillwater Road, South Deerfield. Mr. Antes is seeking a special permit to pasture raise. 10 pigs for farm sale each season at the same address, map 110, lot 4. Mr. Antes, step right up to the hot seat. Yes. 
I need to read into record because I didn't see that uh, we have comments from the building commissioner. I see no problem granting a special permit. It's a farm by right community. Uh, this one is from the planning board and just says from John Waite, says sounds fine. This one is from Conservation Commission, says no comment. Uh, this one is from the Board of Assessors, says no comment. So those are just requests for comments from the, for the board. Go ahead, Max. Um, I currently raise beef and uh, pigs have been requested by different beef customers, so I was trying to fill a need. People want locally raised animals that they know are uh, treated well and fed. I'm in the process of going organic, so I'm not there yet, but try to give them good feed and treat them well and it's what people want, or some people want. Okay. Any questions for Max? Max, you want to tell us how many acres you have? Right there at 67, I got 10 acres. 10 acres? 10 acres. Okay. Yeah. I need, to, <clears throat> I need to make this comment because I probably should have brought this up before, but um, there's going to be another hearing, should this be granted here, there will be another hearing before the Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, for site plan assignment and for conditions applied to the permit, okay? Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section, I don't want to be quoted wrong, man. General laws, Chapter 40, say that you cannot force a person who is in a right to farm district to get a special permit. But it also states in the other Board of Health regulations that piggeries require site assignments that come from the Board of Health. So the vote here uh, bas basically is almost meaningless. And we can hear comments, but I'm just going to tell anybody who wants to comment that they're going to have to go to the hearing that the selectmen hold and the Board of Health hold. You want to say anything else, Max? Before? Uh, these regulations, I believe, are unique to Deerfield. Does Deerfield had put this special permit on the bylaws several years ago, but our town attorney frowns on it because we also have the right to farm bylaw added after that, plus the fact that the site assignment and regulations come out of the Board of Health. That's by general law. Okay. So, anybody would like else would like to comment? I'm Gina Ford. I live on Stillwater Road. And please don't take this personally, Ms. Grantes. But we have had a battle royal with um, the um, with the Romanowski's farm and their pigs. Um, and I think it takes a special person to um, take care of pigs the way they ought to be taken care of. And um, I don't know if this board has gone to Mr. Andy's place to see where he plans to have the pigs and what because um, it can be, um, I think basically that it's just not an area for pigs in a residential area. Um, so that's my opinion. Um, and it's been, um, it's been with, I hope you understand why we are, uh, why I am very skeptical about having anybody having more pigs on that road because, um, it's just um, the, sometimes the stench, the cleanup, the um, things that happen to that land that are coming in. Um, I don't assume that you're that type of farmer. I hope I'm, uh, 
I just can't compare you with the others, but I just cannot see having more pigs on that road. Anyone else like to make a comment? I've got a question. That's a general, that's a general question. From the time that this other farm was approved to, 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 to now, have things changed regarding to what was just a question on how they're kept? The, the other farm has been there for more than 50 years. Right. Predate zoning. Okay. So that's the only... And there is but this land is registered as a new farm, correct? The, 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 the zoning for Stillwater here. Road is residential agriculture. We have no specific right. agricultural, so it's allowed. Uh, so I, I'm not at liberty to make any comments about down the road at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only tell you that he has not very many pigs left. But it's not only the pigs, uh, there's other yeah, regulations. I, yeah, this isn't, I can't, I can't make any comments. Right. Where would those pigs be housed? Max? And is this part of your livelihood, Mr. Andes? Uh, no, this isn't part of my livelihood. Um, it's, the uh, agriculture's mostly a way for me to spend time with my kids and, and have something to do that I can relate to because like there was um, it's just a, a choice I'm making and these pigs will be housed um, behind the house you won't see them from the road they're gonna be well, I'm gonna buy if I get approved I'll buy some the end of the month and they'll go till December and then they go to the slaughterhouse so, so they're on open land with so There'll be a batch every year. I'll buy ten, or I'll buy, right now I'm planning to buy four, and then I'll put them on pasture, and they'll run around and gain weight. And before they get too big, you send them to the slaughterhouse. And so is ten the only pigs you have at any one time? Yes. That was. And the, are they going to be um, <coughs> the, the the sow or the boar? Or? No, no, these are just feed, they call them feeders. You're not breeding pigs. Yeah. You're just buying them and you grow them. You know, you bring them from 30 pounds to 200 pounds and then off to the slaughterhouse they go. What kind of Oh, I have a combination of uh, hog panels, which is a welded wire, and electric fence inside the hog panels. So it's like a double row of protection. So. Pigs used to get out when I was young and it's no fun watching what, or it's no fun chasing them and it's no fun fixing the damage they can do. They're pretty destructive. Yeah. Uh, yes, the lady behind you, Max. Hi. I'm like a mighty here. Oh. <laughs> I have lived on Stillwater Road for 25, 30 years. Okay. And I'm sure all of you gentlemen are, and the, the lady there are familiar with Romanowski. And it's been brought up, I don't know how many times. We have taken them to court. We have done everything that we can think of to improve what's over there. And nothing has ever worked. So if it hasn't worked in 25 or 30 years, I don't know what's going to happen now. How can, how can I'm, I'm hoping to give pigs a better name. slippery slope man. Let me make a comment. Um, you might not like what he's got, 
but I might not like what you have, and I think we have to be careful of when we start judging people about what they have, because we can get into a situation now where I don't like the kind of flowers you have, or I don't like the way you do things. And I get a little concerned when we start looking at our neighbors. Um, he, he's a fireman. He was there when you people moved there, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you know what you're getting yourself into. My, I live on a farm. My next door neighbor has cows. I can smell the cow manure, but you know what? If you want to live in a community that has farms, which people want, you're going to have to put up with things you're not comfortable with. You know, if we want a housing development, we can have that too. And if we keep pushing the farmers out, that's what you're going to have. And people who move here, move here because they want the serenity of our community um, and don't want housing projects. But as you look around, we're losing our farms left and right because we can't afford to keep these farms. And, you know, he's got the right to farm. And we, that's what we passed the law for, to protect the farmers. Um, you know, and you have people that just don't do the things you want, but yet this still is a free country. And if we start impinging upon everyone's freedom of doing things, then we have a problem. And who's the next person to complain about whatever? And, it, and that's what happens. Um, I was there recently, and he has uh, either four or six pigs left. That's it. That's all he's got left. He's, uh, I really don't want to discuss him, but I can tell you that he, he, he well, I'll, I'll give you this comment. He used to have a permit to, to raise 300 pigs. He's let that expire. He is down to something less than a dozen. Okay. some sensibility about um, letting land and your neighborhood fall down and, and, and sort of, you know, um, when those homes were built um, in 87 and 88, it, it wasn't as half as bad as it is now. So there's got to be some sensibility to do that is not a farm. If Mr. Antes takes care of things, He's been in farming before. He, he, he's had farming, uh, he grew up on a farm. Am I right, Max? Um, I grew up where I'm at, and we, we always had yeah. uh, some kind of animal around. So, so. That to me is a farmer, but mm -hmm. I just kind of, that's how I feel anyway. I think that lady over here owns the, wanted to speak. That's me here? The mushroom farm yes. lady. I, I'm Julia. I own 75 Stillwater Road. Uh, I'm a primary abutter uh, of Mr. Antes. We share about 400 feet of property boundary. Uh, I can uh, and uh, also have a lifetime in agriculture and exposure to uh, various uh, livestock operations. I can attest to um, the uh, care and intention that uh, Mr. Antis puts into his livestock operation and I am impressed with the minimal impacts that uh, I've uh, uh, um, been exposed to on site even in the heat of summer. Rarely do we um, uh, experience any odor. Um, I feel like he takes good care of his animals and is a responsible uh, farmer. I'd really like to see uh, him have the opportunity to um, uh, diversify his operation and uh, continue farming on that site. I, I haven't seen any issues with runoff, um, any escape, or uh, any problems on the site at all. And on top of on top of that, Max is a good neighbor and would help any of us on the road. And um, uh, the I, I feel like the uh, Romanowski neighborhood neighbor uh, the the comments have nothing to do with pigs, and it's just more of a personal issue, and that really shouldn't be considered in, in um, uh, the debate over uh, Max's proposal to raise pigs on his property. Now. <clears throat> Somewhere somebody told me that you were going to accept 
the manure from the pigs? Does that have any validity to it? I am in the process with uh, registering with the state to become a registered uh, compost site. Uh, I've recently obtained a certified organic um, uh, title for my farm. I'm working on um, registering uh, to be a state recognized uh, compost site. Uh, and we're going to be processing my byproducts. Um, the, the fortunate uh, part of the equation is um, my byproducts tend to be high in carbon and the byproducts of uh, livestock management tend to be high in nitrogen and they combine to make a very per uh, perfect compost material. Can you explain to the audience a little bit about compost and the manure smell versus it dropping in the field to dropping it in a compost pile? I'd just like sure. to address that a little bit. Mismanaged manure is really what gives uh, livestock management a bad name. Um, proper composting and uh, working with uh, balancing the carbon-nitrogen ratio and proper uh, microbial aerobic digestion of said material really mitigates any um, uh, foul smell that you would associate with manure operations. And uh, even the manure that um, Max has delivered to me for use on uh, my property, um, even the, just the uh, fresh manure has been um, surprisingly uh, uh, lacking in odorless. Uh, my dog's not even interested. Um, and that says a lot. So, um, but the, the proper um, uh, composting process um, where you uh, mix the carbon waste with the manure waste, um, the, the microbes are able to break it down so it's uh, biologically um, uh, hazardous and as well also um, it really doesn't have enough. You're listening to all this, Max? She went to school for all that, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Too much school. <laughs> Do we have any more comments from any of the audience? I just have one more Go ahead. It's just 10 pigs at a time that you're going to have on this property, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I basically have no more objections to Mr. Andy's. Then if there's no more comments, I'm going to close the hearing for deliberation here. And <clears throat> again, we're bound by Chapter 40A to allow the piggery, and it gets referred and somebody sitting in the audience can correct me if I'm wrong, because he happens to be a Board of Health member, <clears throat> that it goes to the Board of Health for site plan review, for fencing, manure management, shelter, water, all comes under the jurisdiction of the Board of Health. So there will be another hearing at the Board of Health. So I want to tell them if they change their mind, Max, they can go to that hearing. <laughs> uh, there will be another, another health meeting. And I don't know, Kip, if you want to make any comments about it. Uh, not at this time, except that you should have anybody that wants to speak, including myself, go to the microphones, otherwise you're going to hear about it, because people can't hear Oh, it. sorry. Okay. Okay. So, your turn, Kathy. What do you think? Well, I, I think you should, we should allow him to do it for sure. Yes. And for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's unanimous. You go to the Board of Health for your site assignment. That's it. You have talk to Wendy, town administrator, have them put you on the Board of Health agenda for site assignment. Okay. Thank you. I see Mr. Mannheim has showed up. Does the board want to reconsider Mr. Mannheim tonight? Yes. We can do that. Yeah. I, okay. I, think, I think that, that I really don't have questions to the board uh, as to... Well, come right up here to the microphone. Sure. Because we already tabled you because you weren't here. Well, once again, I apologize for being a distracted farmer. But there's nothing more important than me being here today. There's no excuses. I. Um, you know, don't worry about it. Just... Tell us what you want to tell us. Okay, so uh, we're, we're 
a, a little bit confused as to which way to turn. Um, so we were cited for having a uh, abandoned house on a non-conforming lot over at 39 Thayer Street. The house has been there since the 19, 1900, and we would like to, or I would like to fix the house so that I could move into it um, and then repair the house that I have in Waitley. So um, this being said, there is 205 uh, feet of road frontage on Thayer Street, and uh, it was suggested that what we ought to do is take the Polish deli, the, where the Polish deli is, out of the equation, and that would give you enough road frontage to, um, to have the other lot be conforming. Um, whereas it would be, it would work if it was deemed as a one-family house, which I'm not sure if that's what the way you guys would, would. Would, uh, I explained to the people here before you got here when I was reading that that you have enough acreage and enough frontage to create that into a subdivided into a second lot so both the deli and the house become conforming lots that are separated from each other. Right. That's a planning board scenario. Right. I'm I'm a little fuzzy on this variance because. Uh, I suppose we can we could grant a variance, but then you'd still be stuck with both houses on the same lot that in the future, if you wanted to sell one of the pieces off, you'd have to subdivide it with the planning board. Right. And Kip, I really like you to comment about that. I what would be the preference if So the the other the, the planning board member. Okay. So so the other the other the other idea was to turn uh, Bourne Avenue into a road, and then the uh, then you would have more you would have frontage from Bourne Avenue. Uh, that's another whole issue requires a town meeting vote. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's not my place to tell them what to do, but my suggestion would be to subdivide the property at this time. Um, and then there wouldn't have to be the variance because it would be more difficult uh, after the fact to do this. Right. So it, as you, would you call the, the Polish deli a one-family house? I mean, there's one family that's living upstairs, and then there's the Polish deli. That district allows one or two family. The deli is grandfathered in there by right because it's been there for 60, 70 years. Right, okay. but so as one family is X amount of frontage and two family is more frontage. Yeah, you'd have to do two family. I would assume you'd have to do two family and the square footage for two family because if the deli ever went away completely and you wanted to convert that to an apartment, then you'd be back here again for, for that. I think, I think I'll be back here anyways. If it's two family, I don't believe we have enough road frontage to, okay. to make the... So then, then your option right now is to... Boron Avenue. It's complicated. Or the or a variance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you couldn't. You, you couldn't. It would take a town meeting vote to make it yeah. a street. If that's the case. If that's what he's looking for. Yeah, that's. Well, I'm I'm looking for the path of least resistance at this point. I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm getting confused. Who are you, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. My name's Hugh Oh, I'm, 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 I'm the gentleman. I'm the gentleman. I'm glad to see you again, but I wanted to know who the gentleman in the red jacket was. My name is Kip Camosa. I'm one of the selectmen and a planning board member in town. Okay, and you're associated with the Board of Health? Yes, the, board, the selectman is the Board of Health. I'm, I'm fairly new here, and I just wanted to know who, who was speaking. I came tonight. Uh, I'm sorry, I still don't know your name. Mr. Mannheim. Mannheim. I'll learn it eventually. I just want, I didn't know exactly what was going on with the property. I just wanted to kind of make, make an opinion voice that I really love the way the houses and the trees kind of make a little paradise in that end of the street to me. I'm new in Deerfield, I walk out my door, I see trees on all three sides. And um, 
And then I live in a little village, and I just love it. So I, I was kind of came to find out what you were planning to do with the property. I don't have any objection to, to the house in the back. And I, I, in fact, I'd be glad to have you as a neighbor. But I was wondering if you were you know, going to develop or do anything with the, with where the deli is and, and the land next to the deli. And, well, I was planning to clean it up, um, but other than that, no. Well, there's, there's, it, there's uh, years of brush and growth and. Oh, by the creek, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, seeing where you where you started. Yeah. Yeah, I was more concerned about the pine trees on the other side. Yeah, we'll be the pine trees. You'll be what? <clears throat> we're, 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 there are no plans to take the trees. Thank you. <laughs> It, it really does make my home just a beautiful spot. Mm. I just wanted to find out what's going on. Yeah, I just want to fix the house. And I think that's a great idea. Anybody else would like to speak? I have no idea about Bourne Avenue. You'd have to they have to contact the Board of Selectmen so they could review the road scenarios. I, I'm under the assumption it's a private way. That's what I, I'm under the assumption, so. I, I don't think that that road can be used for road frontage, but that's a planning board issue. Okay, um, but he has frontage on Thayer Street that will accommodate the house on Boren Avenue. I, I understand there's two ways to subdivide it, this right. way, that way. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Is there um, any ideas to subdivide the parcel? Because it's all on the lot right now. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, everybody speak into the microphone. <clears throat> It, it, it's one, <clears throat> Thayer Street is, is, 39 Thayer Street is one lot as we speak. And so if you were to, to call it a one family house, yet we have enough frontage to subdivide it so that the Polish deli would be taken out. If you call it a two family house, then I believe that you need more road frontage and that would leave us a few yards short. 25 feet more. 25 feet more, which would, so I think there's, it was 205 feet or 210. They only have enough room to subdivide for one family each. Right. And you only have one family, so, at this point. So it should, so it would so if you want to okay. convert the house to two family, you're going to have to go back. You have to come back to here for a multifamily permit. Okay. That's not a variance, that's a permit. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, you're gonna. If, if, if you're talking about dividing the property into two lots. Yes. And if Thayer Street is the front, you'd have to go right down the middle, right there. Well, I think you just leave the whole thing the way it is, the way it is now, it, and it just is, you know, a dotted line that says this is just one lot and this is right. another lot. One lot. Yeah. Wouldn't the red house in the back want to work on be on this side, though, on the deli side? No, you'd, you'd put it between the deli and the, and the road. So that would be your access in. And then you would, you would, in the back of the deli, you would draw a line, and then the rest of it would be the... Well, so you're going to do it this way. Oh, and it would still be, because of that little... I never knew that was actually a driveway that went all the way back to that house. Uh -huh. So you're talking about having two separate addresses. Both on Um, maybe a little. Um, I, 
Because you have the roundabout. Yes. So or if you take it from Boring Avenue and you go around. So the, so the, the So the, the be, maybe the best way to say this is is that you would um, starting at the, the where the driveway is where you're talking about coming up into in from Fair Street mm -hmm. where the where the beginning of the property is mm -hmm. you'd go over a hundred feet and then you would draw a line line going towards back towards the house mm -hmm. and then you would take another right and draw another line to the right and that would be the Polish mm. So it would be on a on the on a, a small lot, and then the other. We have a map here if you'd like to take a look at it. Did I stop drawing it right? I know how it goes. <laughs> I think they're uh, trying to find out where the access is going to be all the way. To, oh, we're going to keep I, the access in the same place. Yeah, we'd keep the access in the same place. So you use the access from Fair Street. Probably use the access from Bourne M. Oh, right. So he won't. Because you'd, you'd still they own well, that Boron Avenue would really be kind of the driveway. Avenue is part of your property. Yes. But it's not a it's not a legal road. It's not a legal road. Yes. You you the access to that house as well as um, the cemetery. Yes. Well, I have a question. Who owns Boron Avenue? I do. So they people you own to the center of the road, right? The center of the road. No, sir. I own the whole road. The whole road, all over the blacktop, the whole thing. Yes. Uh, and and about ten center. feet past the road. Onto the other yes. neighbor's front yard. Yeah, uh, the the neighbor has a fence that's on the that's near the line, next to the line. So there's there's two trees on the other side of the road that. I'm being asked to uh, take down. The Boren Avenue is not on here. Because it's part of the parcel, maybe that's why it's not on there. It's not a legal road. Why are there two other houses on it? That, that's from years ago. Years ago. So there's a cemetery, and those two houses, they all have legal uh, right. Well, away. they may not be legal, but they're what they call um, adversarial possession, which means they've been used for a certain amount of time, which allows the people to keep using it. So and then, won't with well, then it gets to be a sticky are. issue if some he puts a gate up and says, "I don't want you going through there." So it's then it would be an issue. Then it could it could be an issue. I'm not a lawyer, but that's mm -hmm. what can happen. Well, the cemetery, that's the only way. No, I think there is another, another entrance to the cemetery. <clears throat> the, the, the cemetery has an east coast door. I believe that no, the cemetery has an east coast door. That's good. I was just wondering. Right. Um, my kids go up and down that road all the time. Well, it's the cemetery. It's the cemetery. My little boy, my grandson bikes in there. I'm not planning to cross the road. <clears throat> we could put up a toll. I've noticed these readings cover a lot of things. Yeah. Just <laughs> Don't need a TV. It's interesting. Well, from looking at the map, it does. It, what you've said about owning the property appears to be correct. And Boren Avenue, obviously, according to this map, which is an assessor's map, it appears that Boren Avenue doesn't exist. Uh -huh. Any more questions? Then we'll close the hearing for deliberation and talk amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. But uh, anybody got comments? So are we voting on whether or not he can be Still contemplating we're going, to, going to the planning board. We're going to discuss what to do. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it gets, the simplest it gets process is to let them have a variance to reconstruct a, the house. A then if he wants to go that to the goes around here and it goes up by the lot, yeah. 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 he can do that. That's a bigger, Otherwise, it just a, stays on yeah. one lot. Right. And just right. reconstruct the house is there. Yeah. I agree. It would be unreasonable to tell them to tear it down. Right. Yeah. So, 
get pretty confused on this one here. Okay. So I think it's simple actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I should make a motion that we um, allow him to fix the house. Fix the house. To renovate the house. Second it. Any more discussion? All in favor? Bernie? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Frank? Aye. I, I think this, this is not a, a variance as so described. Uh -huh. This is overturning the building inspector's decision to not allow you to renovate the house. Okay. Okay? That's what this is. This is kind of misworded here, okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the recommendation of this board is that you, in the future, if you want to do anything, you go to the planning board and discuss subdividing with them. Okay. Yeah. But by your documentation you presented, it appears that you're, everything's in order, and we're just simply overturning the building inspector's decision not to grant you a permit to renovate the house. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dick, what is the... Uh, what is the frontage requirement in the Center Village District? Is it 80 feet or 100? 100. 100. He was right that on the assessor's map, he owns all of that uh, Bourne Ave. He owns all the, all the way to the property of yeah, the... It appears by the map he owns Bourne Ave. Yep. I mean, everybody has prescriptive rights for driving yep. through there. Yep. But it's... And I don't know who paved it. Uh, huh. It's been paved forever. I assume the cemetery. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Now we have. I need to keep one of our because we did all yes. Now we have Mr. Yes. Brian Atherton on the agenda here. No, maybe this was the attendant machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to put everybody down. Good evening. Could Mr. Atherton explain why he's here? So, um, now that we're kind of operational up there at our address there, 707 Greenfield Road, uh, we applied to get a Class 2 license so that we can sell RVs at our location. Um, this past year, the ZBA board uh, during our planning process and all that good stuff, we uh, had it approved for 12 uh, parking spots for us to sell out of. Um, so when I went for the licensing, um, I do have a license, um, and it says that uh, license not to, uh, license restricted to not more than 12 trailers, uh, and it has our address. Um, the issue I've come across um, is when we initially put the uh, request for the permit, language had to be changed um, and for us to at least get a license to initially start with other than to be able to come back here and get clarification. The issue that I'm having is, and it was brought up by an individual working for the town, was with this license with a class two. Class two, I know Frank is probably aware of what class two is, is, is for a used car license uh, for a dealer to sell. Um, our focus is RVs, anything related to a recreational vehicle. So that could be a motorhome, that could be a trailer. Um, it's kind of a, a tough situation because there's no RV dealer licensing in Massachusetts. Everything class one, class two is automotive vehicle so it's kind of tough so we fit in with the class two the best so what we're looking at doing is if you come into our shop and you want to trade in a car for a trailer we can't accept you right now if you bring me a motorhome for consignment or I want to go sell a motorhome I can't do that because the way this is worded is trailers um, did some little more digging. Other people have expressed some of their input as well, stating that um, a Class II license is for motorized vehicles regardless and can't be restricted to just trailers. I don't know. Our goal is to meet our customer need. I did have um, the RV show recently at the Big E. Um, I've also had some other people in the industry approach me, wanting us to outfit uh, like those Mercedes Sprinter vans 
because we also can outfit their vehicles to be like a concession stand type vehicle. In those cases, we would need to purchase a brand new vehicle from a dealer um, to be able to outfit those vehicles. Right now, I couldn't do that with this license because of the restriction of the trailers. So what I'm requesting is that we can get that um, approved to get that changed to the word vehicle so that I can indeed meet my customer needs. Um, but in order to do that, I was told to come back here to get clarified with ZBA and um, have you folks um, look at what we had already approved or to approve that we can't move forward with that. Okay. That being said, I, I was at the hearings that Mr. Atherton attended. The zoning board previously allowed 10 RVs, was supposed to be the statement. The class two license is required for anything that has a VIN number, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. So a trailer falls under the class two license, motorhome falls under the class two license. I believe that your request was for RVs, okay? Yep. I know that at that time that you were granted up to 12 RV type vehicles by the Correct. zoning board. Correct. It was the board of selectmen that reduced your number to 10. Correct? Mm, not that I'm aware of. You. I, we originally, I believe, what, asked for they, 12, they uh, 15 you parking right now? spots. 12 is what I believe is what was correct because we had asked for more and it got reduced. Okay. By three. I'm wrong about the 10. Yes, Mr. Camosa. Step right up here. Um, I'd like to add to what Richard said is that I also was at all of the ZBA hearings and that. Uh, this gentleman did request uh, to sell trailers. Yep. And part of the process of selling motor vehicles, there's different laws and regulations to deal with uh, the type of construction of the building, uh, oil water separators, and these types of things that go along with that. And none of that was addressed. So when he came to the Board of Selectmen for his Class II license, we issued him a Class II license but restricted to no motor vehicles because he didn't go through the proper channels. Uh, the Board of Selectmen would be happy to issue a license where he could sell, sell motor vehicles if he came before this board and said what he wanted to do with a plan. Then he'd have to go back to the planning board for site plan review for you know all of the necessary equipment to go along with having a garage to repair the vehicles. Now, what I had spoken with, we're not doing any engine repair. We're only doing the resale aspect. Um, so. Again, I, our focus is only. I've got to say, yeah, yeah, that's. I'm. I'm not raising. You know, I don't want to go back to the pig farm, but I just happen to have ten pigs, and they all had a litter of ten, and now I have a. Now I have over a hundred pigs, but I really only have ten pigs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once you're issued the permit, and I think I got a guy here that can represent that pretty well. Yeah. Once you issue the permit to do whatever and motor vehicle repair you become liable for waste oil, mm -hmm. antifreeze, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of hazardous material protections yeah. that need to be regulated and enforced. I understand that, but we're not requesting anything to relate to automotive repair. Well, We are yeah. only asking for the sales of automotive. So okay. your, our focus in the repair shop has and always will be related to the repair of the, autom uh, the, excuse me, the RV aspect of the vehicle. It has nothing to do with mechanical there's going to be any kind of mechanical, there's going to be a repair shop involved with it, uh, not us. When it comes to the RV respect, yes, okay. it would. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, either one of you. You're here for clarification for the vehicles you can have, whether they're trailers, RVs, or motor vehicles. Is that correct? Well, I just want to be able to resell an RV or take a vehicle in for trade and be able to sell it, not repair it in the mechanical sense. Well, the class two license that was issued by the town restricts it to just trailers, or you could call it an RV, but it has to be not with a motor. So that's what you're restricting. Correct. So that prevents me from doing business in town related to being able to purchase a vehicle and outfitting it for a customer. 
That's not true. You can apply for the proper, you can go through the proper channels and come in and get a license so you can do that. That's what I'm trying to do. And bring that proposal to the board and that's what you'd have to I do. I believe you got to bring that to the planning board. The planning board as well. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do and I was directed to come to. I think meeting. you need to clarify that. I think that's what you're here for clarification. Correct. I think that needs to go to the planning board and I think the vehicles that would be addressed would be something like I want to have, I'm just going to use this for numbers, I want to have 10 RVs, it could be a motorhome or a trailer, mm -hmm. and I want to have two vehicles that could be taken on a trade, whether Correct. a truck or a tractor or a car. Right, yeah, that's and what we I discussed. And I think that needs to be clarified 100%. Yeah. So that's my assumption. That was what was in the original uh, documentation for this license of then in order for uh, Kip and the rest of the team there to approve it, we had to remove that language so that at least I had something in writing in the hopes that I was able to put some orders in, which they denied because of the fact that it's not a true license in their eyes because it's not a full yeah, uh, well, class we, two license. We can't address that. We can only address the vehicle issue. And mm -hmm. No, I understand that. Now, I, I don't know the answer. I'm going to ask Frank. Do, do these RVs and stuff require inspection stickers and inspections and stuff? Um, sure. Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are you planning on doing that? I, anything like that would be, have to be related to... Um, I come from the automotive field as well. When you sell a vehicle, whoever purchases the vehicle has seven days to take it to an inspection center and to uh, you know, process that. Um, but again, we're not looking for the repair side of it. So if something's on consignment, that's between, we're just facilitating uh, between the owner of that vehicle um, and the said purchaser. Um, but yeah, they would have to have that vehicle absolutely inspected, but we're not responsible for the mechanical side. And if there was to be some scenario like that, that's when an actual repair shop would be involved, not us. Well, I was just going to mention that's where you could get into trouble. If you take in a vehicle on trade and uh -huh. your intentions are to sell it and it won't pass inspection, you're, you, you'll have to do something. Oh, yeah, you'd have to take care of the repairs. In our case, we would have to so take it to a to shop. So you'd have to farm that out. Correct. Because we're not installing the oil water suppressor. It's not our focus of business. Yeah. I believe that what, at least I, as a member of the um, select board, read the requirements of having a class two motor vehicle and you have to have a facility capable of repairing motor vehicles. But that is also, this particular license is geared towards only automotive itself, not the RV industry and that's where the problem comes about. I, I think, and please somebody jump in. Hmm. I think what we're talking about is something that's beyond the purview of the zoning board. Hmm. I yeah. think the purview of the zoning board is only referred back to the planning board. The zoning board is allowing 12 RVs or trailers, 12 units, I'll 12 call units, it, yeah. okay? Yeah. You need to clarify those 12 units with the planning board by virtue of what you need for oil water separator repair site. And it also has to be coordinated through the board of selectmen. So uh, the only thing we can do is confirm that you ask for 12 you got 12, I th and you need to go to the planning board to, for site plan approval for the gas-powered, propane-powered vehicles of that nature. In, in the, the zoning bylaws, if you wanted to sell uh, motorized vehicles, you would need a special permit from the ZBA to, to sell the motor vehicles. Yeah, well, I think he's got to so, go back. Got to go back to the planning board first. So the guy down the road that's selling used cars has a facility to repair vehicles. Is what you're telling me? Excuse me? Yes. Okay. As far as I know, I asked Selectman. I'm not sure what I was talking about. When I've, um, I've never stopped in there to see myself, but, you know, I've seen places that sell cars that do not have an actual repair we're, we're, facility. We're not deciding on whether you sell cars or not. No, I know, but you know what I'm saying is, yeah. is yeah. I'm in the same basis. I'm only looking to sell. I'm not looking for repair. You can outsource those repairs. I've seen it before many different businesses, other towns. I know this is Deerfield. It's a different town. But in the same case, if there's going to be a mechanical, it's being outsourced, not insourced. And so I need to, instead of bouncing around the town like I did last year when we purchased this property, I'm trying to eliminate the bouncing around. Mm -hmm. And let's try to, you know what my goal is, if we can put stuff in process, as I was sent from the licensing board to this meeting, 
I just want to put the footwork where it needs to be. Well, let me, if the Board of Selectmen is a licensing board and we did not tell you to come here. Actually, you did. We did? When? Yes, you did. Last meeting. At our where this meeting? was approved. Yes, you did. If you there was a recommendation from the Board of Selectmen to send you back here, it was to comply with the zoning bylaws that say if you want to sell motor vehicles, Correct. you had to come back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, par that. part of the discussion. And that's a public hearing, I believe. Well, we have no application. Okay. We came back here for a clarification yeah, only. That's not what he So means. the only thing we do is clarify that, yes, yep. he has 12 units, whatever was specified, okay? If he wants to do anything with those 12 units beyond that, he's either going to file a new application, Correct. and right. that would have to first go to the, and <clears throat> you research this more than me, it would have to first go to the planning board, then to come back here, like you said, for the motor well, vehicle permit. I think that's always been a contention of mine anyways, is, you know, I don't, I don't like that our town, you know, one board does the other thing. I think each board should be able to act independently. So if he should return to this board with an application to sell motor vehicles, you can do your thing. And you, your decision, if it was going to be positive, would be contingent upon, you know, site plan review from the planning board. And then as a board of selectmen, we would take, you know, whether or not, you know, your input was positive or negative, then take the, the planning boards, and that's where we would make our decision. But I don't necessarily think that he has to go to the planning board first, but he has to file a proper application before this board. I'm just trying to avoid the runaround I had last year. Okay. And Ms. Ness had pointed me towards this direction as well as other members um, of that meeting that clarification needed to be uh, met because there was um, a question of whether they could approve it as the documents had been initially written. Like I say, we had to strike the aspect of the automotive because there wasn't enough clarification at the time that the gentleman to my right had brought up. So in order for it to pass, we had to remove that language. Um, so I understand reapplying, but I'm just trying to get a basis of, instead of bouncing around to each board and everybody bouncing me back and forth, is trying to get a clear basis of where do we go from here as a business? Because um, it's a lot of time on your end, my time, I just want to meet my, my final goal is to operate a business here and meet my customers' needs. Um, and I understand from my own um, investigation on these types of licensing, it's, it's, it's just not really great when it comes to the RV side of it. It's just too vague. Everything's geared towards the automotive car repair, which we are not. Well, but it's the closest we have when it comes to the resale because they leave it up to the individual towns to create that licensing. And right now, presently in this town, we are the only RV dealer, and as far as I know, the only one that's ever existed in this town. So there is no, um, I guess we're kind of creating these tread waters at this point. Um, so it's kind of non-conforming to what's pre-existing. I, I disagree. Uh, all you had to do was to apply to the Zoning Board of Appeals to sell motorized vehicles regardless if they're RVs or trailers or whatever. But you okay. applied for trailer sales only. Sure. And that's, you caused your own problem. Not knowing. This is all new well, to me. So Well, yeah, in, in, our, in our defense, we weren't giving you the runaround. I was here for quite a few sure. meetings that you didn't have all the material learning. you needed. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, you described it as a learning process for yourself. Absolutely. So it wasn't us giving you the runaround. Oh, I'm not saying it is. But you did. You just said you were I apologize. the runaround. There, there was other things that were going on. Yeah. through the whole process of getting to open that yeah. wasn't related to just you we guys. We weren't giving you the runaround. Right. Yeah. It's Good. other things. Sorry Good about to hear. that. And I misspoke. Don't, I don't have my zoning book in front of me, but sure. it, it's pretty, you can go in and look right, it's online. I could use my phone while I'm Sure, sure. Is that, do you have it, is that it? Look at the use table. So if we reapply for the vehicle identity part of it, find that section because what we'll have to do is clarify what kip brought up is is this oil water separator thing because that stuff i'm not putting in it's not our focus so we'd have to figure out a, you know what to do there because those are expensive as heck we don't have it yeah, it's a 
air show. That's how close as we are to it. I'm a little uncomfortable having us decide what business is going to places, Kip. I'll be honest with you. I don't. I, to me, is I look at the zoning bylaws. You know, you're, you're making us decide what goes in where. I mean, I think we can look at the zoning laws. We look at the zoning laws. Does it fit or not? Right. But for but us to come in here and say, well, you know, gee, your business goes in here and your business doesn't. Is that what we're going to be doing? No. I, mean, what, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that if that's what we decide to do. But I, don't, in my reading, the bylaws doesn't give us the right to do that. Well, it does. Uh, what it the does? By, yeah, what that bylaw, okay. when it says special <clears throat> permit, what that requires is an individual, regardless of it, if in our bylaws, uh, that zoning chart, it requires a special permit, they come in here and it's up to your board to look and see how it fits in with the neighborhood and stuff like that. There are certain aspects of that uh, that do belong with the planning board uh, as far as site plan review, the building and stuff like that but it's the Zoning Board of Appeals job to see if it's a proper fit for the, in that part of the town. So in other words, if a person's running a business somewhere yep. without a permit, mm -hmm. then we have the right to shut them down? Is that what you're saying? Well, if it was e either illegal or if the business was there prior to zoning or something, I, there's a lot of different things. But yes, if somebody, if somebody just starts running a business out of their house, yes, you do. The, there is no listing that I can find in the zoning bylaws for automobile sales or motor vehicle sales. Okay. Okay. The closest we got to this is retail sales or rental with or, or with or without outside displays with a building of 4,000 square feet or less and then buildings of greater than 4,000 up to 30,000. So. And we're on the as west side. As far as issuing the license and clarifying the license, I hate to tell you this, but I think it's the Board of Selectmen's responsibility. Oh, it is our responsibility for well, the license. Then I don't think anything we say here can overrule that. Okay. I think if, if you want to let him have six cars and six motorhomes or Ten and two, or nine and three, I think that's up to the selectmen to regulate okay. that. I don't see anything in here in the bylaw. I think he came in here before for the retail sales, with or without displays. Correct. So that sounds like a clarification we're looking for, then. Doesn't not no. really. No, it's not clarified in here. Because what the, the building, the building is not capable of dealing with the repairs. And part of having a class two license is you have to have a facility. Now, if you're going to outsource that somehow, Correct. I don't understand that. So I, I just I what if, to look into that. What if, um, being that we know that we can do a restriction, is we put it in the restriction that the repairs, mechanical repairs to a motorhome or motorized vehicle is off-site? I can't speak to that tonight until I... No, I know. But when I, when I, I know I read the regulations, you know, from the, the, I, uh, the state... It required that the facility had to handle the repairs. Yeah, because when I worked at years ago at an RV facility, we did not do oil changes. Um, we did not do brake jobs. Um, and it's a pretty well-known facility in this area, uh, very large scale at this point. Um, I know we did air conditioning and things like that on the motorized vehicle side of it. Um, but as for major mechanical, we didn't do, we outsourced that. Front end alignment, sure. But in a shop like us, we're not doing that kind of thing. But see, that's part of the problem, and that's why our zone is like that, is because you know we don't have anybody that's going to go in there every day and, and, and know if he's just changing tires or changing oils or rebuild. You know, we don't know that. So we have to make sure that it's set up for anything to, related mm -hmm. to repairing motor vehicles. And, and sure. that's, that's kind of what I understood the, the state rules to be. So. I'm going to tell you what I think here uh, for briefly. I don't see where selling motor vehicles comes under the jurisdiction here. I believe that falls under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen for issuing that license. I believe the building for retail sales is uh, allowed, and retail sales meaning, I would say meaning, I'm going to interpret as meaning 
trailers or whatever, cars, motorhomes, whatever. I think it's up to the Board of Selectmen to regulate that. And it would, if I was recommending something, and I'll ask the other board members in a second, I would recommend that the Selectmen get an opinion from Town Council on how to handle that. And okay, if he well, needs to come back for sure. uh, whatever, I'd have the Town Council jump in on this and yep, give an I, opinion. Okay. I think we that's the only that. fair way to do it. Yep. I don't want to, I don't want to deny or give him anything that he's not entitled to. If he's entitled to it, I, he's entitled to it. Uh, and it just isn't in our, the way I read the regulations, it just, the interpretation is difficult. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, if you will, kind of gray areas, but. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to dump it back to the Board of Selectmen and have the Board of Selectmen have Town Council research the uh, repercussions. Now, if the Town Council comes back and says he can, you can issue that license to him, then you need to regulate him, and then if he's going to do any repairs, he has to come back here for a special permit for motor vehicle repairs. Right. And I think well, that's like Well, that's, that's the, the whole issue, and that's why I believe that's there, is because we don't, like I said, we're, we don't have a, a, a police, if you will, to go out and see what he's actually doing in there. So if we're going to issue a Class two license to a location for motor vehicles, we have to assume that those repairs are going to be there. How we go about making sure that that doesn't happen, I'm not sure. Isn't that where the building inspector, he's the enforcer? I think no. that's, I think that's what happens is you get the list of the regulations that he has to meet for that, like right. the oil water separator. Right. You get that regulation and for fire prevention, you get that regulation in place and you have the building inspector enforce that. Right, but to I start with the, the state regulations it. that yeah. you know the board of selectmen have to you know go by to issue a license. Yeah. That's where this whole thing about the repair business mm -hmm. yeah. came into place. So I, I think it needs to be dumped back to the selectmen. Selectmen decide you're going to give your license if subject to this. You know this is what you got to do, and specifically get the town council to say yes. He's got to comply to this stuff? Well, I, I, the question that I'll ask the town council is, and I'll- I think that's what it needs to go, Kev. Is to look town back council. at the, um, the state regulations and say to the, council, uh, to the town council that, you know, the situation is this. The state regulations require the repairs to be made, you know, by the applicant. Okay. The applicant's saying that he's not gonna do that, he's gonna farm it out. What assurance do we have that it's not gonna take place? And if it does, then what do we have to Lake to Santa once we've issued that license. You know. It's hard to cherry pick what you're going to do and not do. Yeah. Right from putting a bulb in for somebody to changing their oil. Yeah. And like you s mentioned, there's no police force out there right. watching yeah. what people are doing. Well, I think so it, it has to be all enveloping. I think it requires things like explosion proof lighting and mm. things. Hot, well, it requires hot work a lot. Areas and, hot work mm. permit. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just like a paint so. booth. You have to have a lot of stuff, and the state has their own inspectors that will do surprise inspections even now as a shop that we are now. I certainly want to give them as much time to discuss this as you want, but my opinion is that uh, we should dump it back to the Board of Selectmen for clarification. Because this is only a, this is an informal hearing. True. Anybody else? I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. So make a motion, Bernie? A uh, motion that we move it back to the Selectmen. For clarification with town council. Yep. Second. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Yep. Sounds like a plan. Back to, back to the selectmen. That's what you get the big bucks for, Kip. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Right. We'll deal with it one at a time. It just doesn't. It really doesn't fit our bylaws. Well, that's what we need to know because there's all kind of lots. Well, it fits our bylaws for retail sales, but that's about it. So being, being no other business, I hear a motion to adjourn. Um, I, I make just a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? second? I think no. all in favor. One of the things is, right. is because of the statute where it says what you need to have. Yeah. That's why we did it. Oh, yeah. I still yeah. Seattle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one's